So one of the ways that we can see these links in the chain happen is through laws. And so you've got a handful of laws there. First are the tithable laws. Tithable just means taxable, and it's whose labor gets taxed. And so you've got, um, in the end of the primary sources, you've got uh, some of these laws. And so you've got the 1643 law, tithable law, that uh, tries to determine who gets taxed. And in 1643, it's determined that, quote unquote, Negro women are going to be taxed. Now, um, what's distinct about this is your, is your you're treating women of color different than you're treating white women. And so you're, in effect, privileging white women. You're saying that their labor is not going to be taxed, that they are somehow special, and that they, they uh, by virtue of their whiteness, have this dispensation. And then uh, later, uh, another law, and I put that in the module for you, uh, a law later will say, Okay, so the first law said Negro women, quote unquote Negro women, but is that what does that mean in terms of status? And the later law determines that even if you are a woman of color and you're free, you shouldn't be as free, the law suggests, as a white woman is. And so even women of color who are free, their labor is still going to be taxed, whereas the, the labor of white women is not going to be taxed. And so again, um, that sets up ideas of white privilege, that we're going to treat white women different than we're going to treat women of color. The 1662 law is the one that um, kind of starts with the nail in the coffin. The 1662 law says that slavery, or sorry, 1662 law says that condition will follow the mother. So think about this for a moment. This is a society based on English law, and we've said this is an incredibly patriarchal society. So in theory, nothing should follow the mother, right? Everything follows the dad. Properties handed down through the father, the names handed down through the father, nothing is connected to the mother. But in this one thing, they're saying, oh wait, we're gonna have this follow the mother. So your status is the status of your mother, meaning if your mother is a free woman, then the child will be born free. If the woman is enslaved, the child will be enslaved. So it sets up hereditary slavery. And also think about what this means for slave owners. This creates the possibility of rape of enslaved women. And then um, these slave owners now are ensured that um, the enslaved woman's children will also be enslaved. And you have a letter, uh, an excerpt from a letter of Thomas Jefferson, where he writes about the benefits of having enslaved women on a farm versus male laborers. And what he's alluding to is that enslaved women, this is the third president of the United States is, is suggesting that enslaved women are more profitable for a farm because they can um, provide additional slaves. Think about, too, the implications of that taxable law in terms of not just creating um, white privilege, but also just the economic uh, disadvantages. If you are a black family, the labor of your entire family is taxed versus if you are a white family and you have, you know, an equal number of um, male children who are of age whose labor can be taxed and female children, the only labor that's taxed is going to be the male children in your household or the males who are children who are of age to be taxed for labor. Um, and again, you saw with Mary Johnson, there was that exception made. So again, these laws, one person at a time, one, one law at a time. All right, 
you've got both the tithable law and the 1662 law in your textbook. If you've got the fifth edition, it's on page 82, so there's some further um, examination of those laws there. And then um, if you've got any questions, again, put those in the module. I'll be happy to help you out. Take care.